anatomy and physiology. What is anatomy? Anatomy is the science that study the structures of the body, and physiology is the science that study the functions of the body. Next, human structure is important because our body is organized, right? It has certain organization, and an organism such as human is composed of systems. Systems is composed of organs. Organs are composed of tissues, and tissues are composed of cells. Cells are composed of organelles. Now, we can go even to more subdivisions by saying that organelles are composed of molecules, and molecules are composed of atoms, because after all, everything in this world is made of atoms, right? But it should be okay if you know that cells together form tissues. Tissues together forms organs. Organs together form systems, and systems together form an organism. In this case, the human being. The next topic is the human function. All these cells and tissues and organs and systems are going to work together in order to keep the person alive. Right? In order for us to be alive, we need to have certain characteristics, such as, for example, have organization, have metabolism, responsiveness, movement, homeostasis. Right? Homeostasis is maintaining balance of all the characteristics that we have inside our body. So how do we maintain balance? Well, we're going to maintain balance and stasis using negative and positive feedback. We're gonna use a graph that we have right here regarding temperature to show the concept of homeostasis. Homeostasis means balance. In this case, the balance is the set point. Anything that deviates from the balance is gonna be considered not normal. So if the temperature goes up, your body will put the temperature down and bring it to homeostasis. If the temperature is down, your body will work in order to bring this temperature up to the normal set point, in this case, 37 degrees. If the temperature goes up, your body will do the opposite. Temperature goes down, your body will do the opposite, bring it up. Since it does the opposite, this is gonna be called negative feedback. You scroll down, we're gonna see an example of positive feedback. And that is the case when the female is going to deliver a baby. When the female is gonna deliver a baby, uterine contractions start. But instead of reducing the uterine contractions, uterine contractions are going to not only be more frequent, but also stronger and stronger until the baby is born. So then in this case, the body doesn't do the opposite, but rather actually increases and do and provide more uterine contractions are more frequently. And because of that, this is considered positive feedback. Next part is the anatomical position. As you can see in this figure, anatomical position is the position that is gonna help us to identify different regions and different areas in our body. In anatomical position, the face is facing forward, arms are on each side, right? they are not crossed, for example, the legs are slightly open, the palms are facing forward, now, the anatomical position can be divided in different areas, right, using planes, as you can see here. For example, frontal plane divides the body in anterior and posterior. Here is the sagittal plane. The sagittal plane cuts the body in left and right. Right here is a transverse plane, and this cuts the body in superior and inferior. So all these parts are going to be considered directional terms, such as ventral, dorsal, anterior, posterior. So the next topic is the major body regions, and we can say that we have the one in the middle is going to be the axial, and the ones on the side are going to be the appendicular. This is the axial, and this is appendicular. Okay, in the axial, you have the thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity. If we scroll down, you can see in there that the abdominal cavity can be divided in quadrants, such as left upper, left lower, right upper, Right lower, okay? And these quadrants are going to help us identify the position of the organs that we have in the abdomen. Another way that you can identify the organs that you have in your abdomen is using regions. In the case of the regions, they are divided in nine, as you can see right here. The one in the middle is the umbilical region, on top epigastric region, below is hypogastric region. The ones on the left and the ones on the right are going to have the same name. So this one on the top is hypochondriac region. This is gonna be right lumbar region. And this one is gonna be the right inguinal region. These three are gonna be the same, but they are gonna be left. Next topic is body cavities, and we said that we have different cavities, such as thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity. We already mentioned that. Obviously, different organs are going to be located in there. Like, for example, in the cranial cavity, you have the brain, and thoracic cavity, you have the heart and the lungs. So next topic is organ systems. Right here, you have some of the systems that we have in our body, such as, for example, the integumentary system. So if it's a system, it must have an organ, and the organ in the integumentary system is going to be the skin. So you also have in their skeletal system, muscular system, right? you have lymphatic system. The lymphatic system, you have organs such as, for example, the lymph nodes. 
respiratory system, you have the lungs, urinary system, the kidneys, nervous system, the nerves, and the brain, for example. The endocrine system is going to be the glands. The digestive system, you have stomach, intestines. In the male reproductive system, you're going to have the testicles, prostate. And in the female reproductive system, you're going to have uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries. 